Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking about Netflix's Pieces of Her. We are joined today by the wonderful Tony Collette and Bella Heathcote. And Tony, I wanted to dive straight in by, by asking you a question and talking about the way in which you developed your character, because, you know, there's so much duality to who your character is. She's had to form this entirely separate identity for herself and live under that for the past 30 years of her life. But we also learned that that's always been a facet of who she is, you know, growing up in her childhood, that's something that existed within the relationship with her father as well, having two different versions of herself. And so I was interested in when you were developing her, how you really thought about that always being a facet of who she was, even from such a young age. Mm, Good question. Um, Yeah, look, I love that there's so much that's internalised for my character. Um, And I think ultimately this is a story about someone coming to a point where they might actually really begin to know themselves because she has really had had to split herself and shut parts of herself down for her entire life. She was a, a, a child prodigy pianist. Her father was so intent on pushing her. Her life was very controlled and she had no sense of autonomy whatsoever so she rebelled pushed him away went into a relationship with a guy where the exact same dynamic was set up this guy except they had sex and which was much more mesmerizing and so she did everything he said as well until that went horribly wrong um and then she goes into witness protection where she has to become someone else entirely and then so this is the story about her actually coming to a moment in her life and through her daughter. And actually, I think our kids teach us so much. Um, so it makes sense that this is the way it's it's all uncovered, um, even though the horrible uh, instigating catalyst of it all is the the, sh- the, sh- the shooting in the diner, which was um, challenging and interesting to shoot. Um, but, yeah, I think carrying generational trauma and trying to stop it and repeating patterns and not even knowing you're doing it um, is so fascinating to me. I just think it's being a human is such a mess and this really captures all of that. Um, And Minky was very clear about, you know, and there's obviously Jess Barden playing the younger version of Laura, um, at which point her name is Jane. And um, so Minky Spiro, our director, was very clear about the trajectory for us so that we were all very aware of where we were at at any given moment. But she was also always saying to me, I just love, I can see so much going on that you don't know what's going on. So that was really fun to play with. Just just very enigmatic, but not in a sexy way. Like it was very frustrating, you know? Mm. I really love that. And and Bella, kind of jumping over to you, you know, that that moment with the shooting is such a catalyst for everything that your character goes through the entire season and happens so early on. Um, and so how did you set about really finding the foundation of your character and building that so that as every aspect of her life kind of gets pulled from underneath her, you could really kind of work on how you were stripping that away piece by piece? Uh, you know, I just really lent into my low self. <laughs> esteem for Andy I mean that diner scene it's just like she feels like she's she's had the training she should know how to deal with this situation and she doesn't and she just fails in her mind so dismally um this is another situation where she's the stuff up you know and it becomes very public very quickly which doesn't help oh gosh just awful they're being trolled and uh um and then it's like that, and and again in the episode, she feels like she makes another huge mistake, and the stakes are so high. Um, so watching, oh gosh, I just feel like that's um, that's something my husband has to stop me saying because I'm always like, I made a mistake, you know. That's like my go-to is kind of like Andy's um, Andy's default mode. But that's what was so beautiful about the story because when you watch her grow as the season unfolds and as she rises to different challenges and, and, and handles them in different ways. And, and also that idea of the relief in learning that maybe you always felt like something was that you were, you were wrong, but it was the something else that was wrong, something that she didn't know about and, Mm -hmm. and learning that learning about her, her story and her mother's story and the the catharsis and all of that. Mm -hmm. 
No, that's really great. Um, you know, and kind of jumping off of what you were saying, Tony, before about that that scene being really, really difficult to shoot for both of you. I was really interested in the the intricacy of that scene coming together because every time you go back and look at that scene, every single beat and piece of that rhythm and flow is so precise in terms of what we see, when we see, you know, what we know about the characters at the beginning, but also what you can go back and glean once you've seen the whole season. Um, you know, from from the moment where Andy freezes when her mom kind of covers you know, when she's got the knife in her hand and then how long is it before she retaliates because there's a whole processing that's going on of everything that could be a ramification. Um, and so I was interested in, in kind of the work that you did with Minky on that particular scene and really making sure that it had all those nuanced details and intricacies. I mean, the entire thing was very detailed, really, wasn't it? Um, but I think that's what brings something, what 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 enables it to be as honest as it is, just like, you know, all those elements of truth. We, I mean, we started, I remember our first day on that, Bells, we worked with um, the stunt team, right? And we worked out the blocking for it. So we kind of got a shape for it so they knew how they could shoot it and then we were able to, you know, breathe into it on the day. And But it is the scene that really kicks everything off and... Um, had to be completely believable and yet for most of us we'll never experience that and it's so heightened and you hear about it happening it's so horrible uh, and trying to bring an element of truth to that is hard it's just hard to fathom how you would be anyway luckily we had great scripts and knew what we had to do and Minky was just always didn't you feel so supported by her the entire time honestly she's just the most beautiful director so open and just just as married to everything you're doing as you are um and just a deep thinker and just a lovely lovely human um so uh having her guidance and just she had put I mean she works harder than anyone else there were so many elements um in all the scenes but definitely that that was that was a massive one it took several days was it two or three days I can't remember three I think it was three yeah and it was hot I remember it was hot <laughs> um so uh but I guess from Laura's point of view it's all it's always about saving Andy. It's always about protecting her daughter. And we were just doing another interview, actually, I don't know, here, um, where we were talking about um, that moment where I do put my hand over mm-hmm. Andy's eyes and I just did that instinctively. I don't know. Anyway, um, I just, as a parent, I wouldn't want my my kids to have those visual memories to, to you know, it's traumatic enough. Um, so. Um, it was incredibly collaborative, you know, for people to use the stuff that you come up with or, you know, it all becomes a bit of a blend of things and it's hard to then kind of pull apart how we put it together once it's done. Yeah. yeah. Was that similar to you, Bella, or kind of what were the intricacies for you? Because for you, it's so much about kind of <clears throat> becoming very physically still in that moment and taking everything in and just completely, you know, all of her facets shutting down in that moment. Yeah, I feel like she's not even taking everything in. I feel like she's just completely in shock. Mm. Um, which is also, I mean, not that not that it's a competition, but I feel like Tony had the real tough job in that scene in 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 responding in that way because I hope none of us ever experience this and know how we would respond. Um, but I think you know, my fear is that I would just freeze and become completely. Um, useless so yeah I think Andy was just completely in shock uh, and it's certainly what we discussed with Minky Mink, working with Minky is like walking on a trapeze and knowing that there's just a safety net underneath you that can catch you um, she was such a gift yeah no, that's the perfect way to work with a director and mm. and jumping back to you Tony you know it is such an interesting performance and such a great character because like you said before she's not revealing herself on the surface. She's not expressing herself. So it's not about, you know, making the obvious choice in terms of her emotional response to anything. It's very much about everything that's going on internally and that she's trying to suppress things. But there are kind of little small nuanced moments where things do come to the surface for her, like when she's in the car with her ex and she has to get out of the car for a moment. So it it still does come to the surface. Um, Mm. And so what were the challenges in creating a performance that's so internalized for so much of the series and then finding those, those those little moments where that happens well the fun of it was choosing when to reveal stuff you know when the moments where you really want to i you know allow the audience in and where you can really identify something which is a bit of a hint at where you're going um but i mean that's really with every job you do a bit of that um 
when I when I like something, it actually is obvious. Even if the choice isn't obvious, I can see why it has to be that way. So it's a pleasure to do, but I also am very bad at not being able to turn off my feelings. So whether whether you, mm. whether it's big or whether it's small, um, I'm feeling it. And so internalizing everything is very exhausting. I don't think I've maybe never been so exhausted by a job. I was so exhausted by the end of this, felt like a total zombie. Mm. It was hard, and I don't often admit that. I found it very, very challenging. Um, I mean, I loved it, and some of it was very satisfying, and the people were wonderful, and it was amazing to work in Sydney and um, sleep in my own bed and see my kids uh, while I was working. Um, you know, um, that was also challenging because I had to make school lunches and do drop-offs and try and do it all. <laughs> but um, it was just... If I can't explain, I mean, it's wonderful when everything is more than what you imagine when you get there and everything becomes this elevated kind of version of what you hoped it might have been. But it's also fucking exhausting. And I'm doing comedy right now, and that's the end of the story. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And the next one's a comedy too. So I just need to do some light, lovely, oh. light stuff and have some fun for a while. You wench. <laughs> I mean, similarly for you, Bella, there's there's so much internalization in your performance um, as the show progresses because she has to build up all these walls out of necessity and not being able to trust, you know, everyone from her own mother to, have, you know, her stepdad to anyone that she meets for the first time because she doesn't know what anybody's intentions might be. And you Horrible. have, Ooh. yeah, and you have a really remarkable amount of screen time where you're carrying scenes by yourself and also don't have a scene partner to play off of mm. as well. And so what were the challenges that came with that for you? my brain's in two places one was that scene where I'm like watching I feel like I I shot a whole day of me looking at a blank tv screen but I'm seeing all these things you know like I'm seeing my mum play piano and like all these things like it's it's this momentous moment of discovery about her life (laughs) it's just and you're like and like I can see the reflection (laughs) of like half the crew in the background I'm like cool 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 Um, there was definitely a lot of that but also that that I mean, I'm, I relate to what Tony said in I have a lot of big feelings and I, I, they just come to the surface. And when you're our first day together, we were like reunited after a bunch of time apart. Time apart. We were just like immediately in the Going scene. Into a massive scene. Set. Yeah. And Mickey was like, no, you're not in that place. There was so much just, I, I feel like I, I had to be told a lot to, to hold back. Um, but yeah, there was, there was so much of that. And that's something that, you know, that I, that you don't think about when you read the scenes or when you read the scripts, when you read the book, you don't think, oh, there's going to be a lot of just me having reactions to things um, that aren't there. No, it's really impressive, though, in watching your I remember, not to bring it back to myself, but (laughs) when I did United States of Tara, like, because I played a bunch of characters, I used to often have to do scenes with, like, tennis balls on top of stands. And, you know, part what I actually love the most about acting is that connection with the other actor. And when they're Mm. as open as, like, Bella, you were so beautifully open, not everyone is, and to have someone who's present and... You know, it feels like anything can happen. That's the most, mm. that's the best day at the office you can have. Like mm. it's so exciting and so satisfying. So it is a big, big challenge. And hats off to you, Bella, because you spend a lot of time searching, searching, searching on your own. And that's a lot to withhold. And um, and it doesn't seem like as an audience member, like I've watched it now and there's, you know, it's it's beautifully done. So congratulations and thank you and all the, all the stuff, all the love. <laughs> And also in, in terms of the relationship that Andy has with her mother as well, there's that, that line in the script where she basically is like, every time I feel like I get closer to knowing her, it all kind of falls apart again and gets stripped away. And so it's not even that it's a, it, you know, there's no straight path for her to kind of find her way back to her mom. It's a very kind of like, for lack of a better word, higgled, higgledy piggledy route to get there that goes in a lot of different tangents and a lot of different directions for her. Um, and so how did you set about, again, particularly because you're carrying that relationship for so much of the series without being on screen with Tony, um, you know, so how did you want to carry that relationship and really kind of dive into all of the different landscapes that it throws at her because of that? I feel like that one was I mean, because I, you know, I think about my own relationship with my mother or with the people that are closest to me in my life, there's something quite um, 
visceral about the idea of imagine if this person who you think you know better than anyone who you've lived with your whole life, it turns out that that whole life was a lie. Um, and each time she's finding some new piece of evidence, it's just like that level of betrayal and just feeling so hurt and so stupid and so angry. Um, and then also where does it stop? You know, there's this, it's like, I don't want to give any spoilers, but, but this idea that maybe mum didn't always intend to ha have me with her. Um, maybe she, she thinks, maybe she knows as well that she'd just be better off without me. And um, yeah, I feel like if anything, that was, I don't want to say easy, but um, it felt, like it very came. accessible <laughs> yes yeah it was definitely accessible more than you know acting with the, the blank tv screen <laughs> i mean so much of the show is about the facets of, of this really kind of beautifully complex mother-daughter relationship and so we get to see that real closeness at the beginning there's some of the the scenes kind of going back in time a little bit where we get to see aspects from their past as well and so there's real intimacy between the two of them and then you know you kind of both go off and have your your separate character trajectories throughout the series and then there's the point where they come back together um, and so I was really interested in in how you look to the scripts the conversations that you had with like Charlotte Stout who's the the showrunner you know Minky as well in terms of just like what does this emotional space look like for them now looking at all of the experiences that they've had separately and trying to rebuild this relationship and find a new space with one another. Well, I think by the time we reunite, um, Andy has discovered so much that uh, it'll take a while, I think, for things to kind of, you know, to sift through things and to mm -hmm. process it all. Really, it'll take a lot of therapy. Um, but I think she understands maybe why why her mother did what she did. And, and in that moment, we're confronted with someone else who's very much involved. And so it's e I think that made it easier for us to unite, right? Mm. Certainly by the end. I mean, I think when, also when we first got back together and that, that which was what was so important about Minky saying, you know, just like hold back the feelings because I think. There's plenty, there's several places there's to go coming up. heaps of room for that later. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, but in terms of like this person who I would have felt safe to have my feelings yeah. in front of now, like there's a certain period in the show where I'm not, you know, where like I'm, I'm, I'm wary of you, um, Tony. The person you're meant like, to feel the most safe with. It's, and it is a complete betrayal. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's just the worst thing ever to feel that. Suddenly the whole, the ground falls away. It, nothing is the same. It's just hugely revelatory in the worst sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was it really telling to you, Bella, that there's no point in the script as well where there's a friend that she reaches out to or connects to as well, you know, having moved back home with her mom and, and being a little uncertain of where she's going in her life, that she's kind of allowed herself to kind of pull back a little bit already? Yeah, I feel like she just, like her friends are in New York and they're doing great things and she just feels like a loser. Like she's just working in some, like basically a call center at night and that's not what she wants in her life. You know, that's not what she was aspiring to do. So um, I feel like she doesn't feel like she can reach out to her friends. because. And then when she's on the run, I mean, what's she going to, you know, she can't out of safety. And then the one person she reaches out to, it looks like that was a bad idea. You know, um, she just, it just gets to the point where she, she has nowhere to turn. Mm -hmm. um, and Tony, kind of coming back to your character, I wanted to talk about her relationship to music because it's something that was such a facet of her life. You know, she was traveling internationally playing classical piano and in going into witness protection, that was one of the things that she was no longer able to have in her life and to have something that you're so connected to that's such an outlet. And there's even, you know, the moment where um, Jessica Barden playing her at the younger version is, is describing how sometimes when she plays the piano that it makes her feel like she's with her mom still. So there's that relationship that exists for her within that space as well. And so what was what was the space that you really saw for your character in having something like that completely stripped away from her where she can't have that connection and have that expression of herself anymore? Um, look, I, th I think she's a fairly pragmatic person. And so just pushing it away, like she does a lot of pushing away. Um, yeah. And it isn't until there's a moment where she, she is reunited with where she has a moment of freedom and she, you know, Andy says to her, what, what do you want to do? And then, you know, you see her suddenly standing at a piano and it's a symbol of 
so many different moments in her life um, and sitting down at the piano and touching again and feeling it and playing it. And the, it's not just the memory of the music, which is one thing. It's the memory of just all the pieces of her. It really is just, it's like she's had so many different lives and the relationships have been, you know, fairly intense and the experiences have been heightened and and she's been completely shut down. So when I do sit down to play that piano again, it's like opening the floodgate. Yeah. And you also that. you also only had about two weeks to learn. I the had piece two weeks you were exactly. Play. Two weeks. And I'm not a pianist. And I had to play a Bach piece, which was but yeah. and I had to remember it. There was no music to read because the characters were remembering it. Um and it was I was panic stricken. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> and without so, and, music as well, right? No, mu- no music to read. No, it was. I had to remember it. And actually, it's a very repetitive piece. So, um, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And um, but do you know what? I'm really. At first, I was really pissed off that it was early in the shoot. And the reason I couldn't move it was because the schedule, whatever. They had the location, and that was it. But I'm actually. I was very glad afterwards because if it had been towards the end, I would have been just as panicked the whole time. But it was. Mm. I was really happy that it was kind of a truncated period and very concentrated yeah. it was intense yeah I tortured um, myself over it but like I had to I just had to otherwise I wouldn't have gotten to that point where I could actually play it yeah no I'm wildly impressed that you did that in two weeks and um Bella one of one of the relationships that I was interested in in hearing a little bit about for Andy as well is also the relationship that she has with Charlie who it turns out has been her wit- you know her mom's witness protection agent but has been kind of a secondary father figure to her her entire life he's been there for every single birthday every single kind of milestone of her life um you know because that's another close relationship that that ends up in a space where it's pulled away from her because she knows that everything that she thought was true about that isn't can you imagine? It's just like two the two closest people in her life. I mean, aside from Gordon, it just turns out that relationship was nothing like what she thought it was. I mean, all those moments, there's, you know, she talks about like, you know, he was a shoulder to cry on mm-hmm. throughout, you know, she talked to him about boys, like, and it's all, as far as she's concerned, it's all a lie, you know, like mm-hmm. all the people that she's gone to for help in her life, it's just been a complete facade. Total fabrication, um, yeah. God, I just, just awful. Um, and also that moment before the period where she doesn't know who he is, you know, the, the period where she's like, wow, maybe he's uh, against me as well. I mean, the. The questioning, that, level, that, that right? having to question yeah. it, even having to go there and question it is horrible, let alone actually being right. Oh, horrendous. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and then Tony, kind of stepping into to spoiler territory a little bit, I wanted to talk about the scene where you see Nick again for the first time. You know, it's been about 30 years since the two of them have been together because, again, there were just so many facets at play in that scene in the way that they're kind of both sizing each other up. They both have an agenda. You know, they're both trying to kind of be the person who's got the power in the play. And at the same time, there is that emotional history between them as well. And I feel like the two of you really, really captured all of those facets in that moment. Um, So I was just interested in how you really found all the beats for that scene. Do you want to know how? (laughs) This is the weird thing. Aaron Jeffrey, who plays Nick, we were at drama school together. We were not together romantically at all, but Mm -hmm. we had not seen each other in 30 years. It was the most bizarre thing. And that really, really helped. I'm so fond of him. I always have been. And then when they decided that he was playing Nick, it was just like, wow. And I think it really helped contribute to that dynamic. Um, But it was all, you know, doing all those, seeing him and it was almost a relief because it's everything that she's been holding in and all of those just, you know, it's all got to do with her dad who's gone and her family um, and mostly Nick, this guy who just, we kept talking about the twin flames kind of soul connection um that you do see when when we come together you can see that already she still like has to fight the like urge to just sink into him you know mm-hmm. um but then as soon as she sees andy like she, it's it's you know laser focus on what needs to be done um yeah but again we're dealing with such heightened kind of circumstances with you know where that scene goes you know yeah, yeah that's a lot. pat down. Oh my god, the pat down. 
pat down. Like sexy, sexual pat down. Like yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> this is not right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then jumping back to you again, Bella, you know, one of the things that I love in Andy's trajectory is kind of going back to what we were talking about earlier. She has that moment where she freezes. She doesn't have the response that she feels like she should have and that she had the tools for. And yet then she spends the entire rest of the series finding those facets and, and those elements within herself and finding herself capable of a lot of things um, mm-hmm. that she didn't think she could. And so um, was interested in how you approached kind of the very realistic version of okay what's her version of of being able to find this bravery within herself being able to comfortably step and do this you know the way that she's suddenly able to like very adeptly read people and navigate a lot of dangerous treacherous situations that maybe she wouldn't have been able to at the beginning of the season um yeah I really I I like that description of the arc and I also Mm -hmm. liked it because it felt it felt Mm -hmm. very grounded like it wasn't like all of a sudden she fails in the diner or freezes in the diner and then she just becomes this. Jazz hands in life. Yeah. <laughs> um, CIA agent or something. Uh, I just feel like it, it was just like a one drop at a time. Each scenario just built upon the last. And, and then it's like, what's the alternative? I mean, she has nowhere else to go. And I feel like the only freedom she's going to find is in the truth of the situation in the truth of like who her mother is and, and, what her life is really built on. So I think that drive to uncover the truth just trumps everything else. For for Andy and for her mum. Like, Mm. uh, you know, Laura's been living with so many lies and it's only, only, only at the end, at the end, at the end of the entire story that she gets like a small breath of what is potentially freedom before it's taken away again. Mm. So, Yeah. I mean, within that for Laura as well, she's also, there's also the moment where she's talking to Clara's husband and he kind of calls out, you're looking for someone to forgive you and, you know, for choices that she made when she was really young that have impacted her entire life and now her daughter's life. And what did you want her relationship to be with trying to find that forgiveness within herself? Because, you know, even the moment that she says her, her old name out loud for the first time, it feels like that's a real journey and a transitional moment that she has within herself when she says that to Gordon. Uh, I think no matter what happens in life, it's all about your relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. Every other relationship you have is a reflection of your relationship with yourself. Um, So I think Andy is a gift to Laura because she forces her hand, forces her to face all kinds of truths that she's been avoiding. Avoiding, yes, to survive, but actually it's been easier than facing it because she's very guilty of very many things. Um, And... uh, I don't know if at the end if she's forgiven herself. I don't think she has actually mm-hmm. by the end. I think I think she's come to a point where she can finally look at the truth without having to shut the book really quickly, but she doesn't quite doesn't sit in a way that she can fully understand yet. I mean, her whole life has been kind of very traumatic. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, as hard as this was, I do actually hope there's a season two because I think it'll be really interesting where it could go because... The end of the season is so jam-packed with so much more interesting stuff, Mm. you know. So anyway, we'll see what happens in life, who knows, whatever. But um, I just think if it did, it would be maybe even more interesting, you know, navigating these internal battles. Mm. Yeah, no, it's it's a really, really fantastic series and ends in such a place of still having very realistic complexities. And I was completely enthralled by both of your performances throughout. So thank you so much for taking time and talking all about it. Really, really appreciate it. I really Thanks, appreciate you. This is a really amazing interview and so um, just so considered and uh, that's, you know, rare. <laughs> thank you.